Hello, once again, audience, and welcome to Streaming with Christopher. I wanted to walk through a couple of the settings that I have been fighting with uh, in order to actually improve the stream quality on our channels. Uh, my wife has hers, Mac Marla Dominations, and mine, of course, is Christopher Dominations. So the purpose of streaming, obviously, uh, and you can see my desktop here, uh, is both to be able to actually stream and get recording working. Uh, this software is called OBS. You can see that I'm running the 64-bit version of OBS. Um, I'm going to do my very best to be brief. There is an excellent, there's tons of excellent tutorials. One by APOC, uh, who's been an excellent resource for me as far as trying to troubleshoot and providing some of the settings that he uses as a baseline. Um, so this is actually the, I'm running uh, Windows 10 64-bit, I've got 12 gigs of RAM, I've got, it's a, it's a decent little machine that I've got here, uh, dual video cards, NVIDIA, uh, so I wanted to walk through some of the caveats that I found. Uh, one of the primary ones that I found is actually networking. Uh, you have to have a network cable that goes from your modem to your computer. Uh, so where you begin is by getting a little application called AirServer. So uh, AirServer is Mac proprietary, uh, AirPlay or mirroring as it's called from iOS. Uh, however, this software does come with a free trial I would recommend that you give that a shot in order to play around with it. I would highly recommend that you go ahead and get the paid for version. It does work very well. Uh, so let's walk through some of the settings on there. Now, what you are going to be using is not actually AirPlay. AirPlay is Mac or iOS proprietary. Uh, everything else uses what is called Miracast. Now, Miracast is effectively a wireless streaming service that allows you to connect your Android device or whatever you're playing on to your desktop. Uh, and I will show you right here how that actually works. Uh, so I'm doing this off of my phone, uh, which is a Galaxy Tab S6. And I'm just gonna pull down from the top, scroll over and say screen mirroring. You have to be on the same wireless network. And then of course, I've set this up and I've said go ahead and automatically connect and run when Windows starts. I did have to update a couple of the drivers uh, and I am on a five gigahertz network for my wireless. So I gave my computer a name, Tech Ninja. And I believe that's failing. Uh, let's see what network we're actually on. My router actually has several different networks. No, that's, that's correct. Of course, it's not gonna work. The one time that I'm trying to show you guys how it works, So we're waiting for it to start streaming. So once it starts streaming, let's just pop open. Uh, oh, how nice. Uh, suitable 3D graphics device cannot be found. So th these are kind of some of the problems that I've been encountering with this. Um, one of the things that I had to do was download the Jeep, the, the NVIDIA application in order to control what was actually running and where. Now display, mirroring, post-processing, advanced. It seems to be a little bit tied down. Oh, see, and there it is. It's frozen. Uh, 
Let's kill it. Now, obviously, if you have a very basic router with only one network available, this would probably be a little bit more streamlined for you if you weren't like me and mucking with all these settings all the time. Uh, advanced, post-processing, mirroring, display. So I'm trying to, I don't see the settings for that. So let's just go ahead and try it again. Miracast is trying to connect. I think we might have to kill that application and start it again. I do have a 3D graphics card enabled, obviously, and we'll get to that in a little bit. See, isn't this fun? Uh, end task. Make sure that that's gone. We'll pop it open again. We'll pull it over. And this is what Marla has to deal with as far as me troubleshooting. He's usually sitting here and trying to do these things. There we go. So after mucking with some more of my settings. And as you can see, uh, it shows my phone. And... Now the fallacy here and the reason that you have to have a network uh, card, or like a network wire plugged into your computer or your laptop is because this is an HDMI over wireless, meaning that it is gonna utilize as much of your wireless bandwidth as possible. Um, I have found that mucking with the settings does actually help as far as the post-processing or what is called post-processing. So if we look at the performance here, um, it's actually not that bad. But if we launch a game, let's launch Dominations. You can see that that jacks up to about a meg. So you're better off actually having three megs per second. So yeah, you're you're hitting the very high top end as far as the capabilities of wireless, which is why when you're streaming, you want to have two network cards, one wired and one wireless. Uh, see, that goes as high up as 6.1 megs per second. So that's not that bad. And you can see in the background there that it is actually fairly smooth from here. Now, as far as the generic configuration, I am using the studio version of this software and what you're going to want to do uh, hmm how can we do this you're going to want to actually add a source and obviously this is overlaid it over and over and over and over uh, you want to add a window capture you just want to say okay and it's going to pop that open right away as soon as it's connected and you're going to go ahead and say, yes, that's exactly what I want. Um, you can change the overlay of these things. So you can see that my face is now behind this window. What you're going to want to do is change the ordering by clicking the up and down arrows. And there you go. Now I'm above. And you'll see in the studio version, <laughs> you'll see in the studio version that there's actually a little box around there, at least in Windows 10. I think there's supposed to be a box in the regular OBS version as well, but that allows you to move and drag the window around to resize it and do whatever you would like. Now, I am going to remove that source because obviously it's chugging a little bit. Now, I have found that Miracast is actually very CPU intensive, um, as I will show you here. CPU, 
And if I go to the processes, you can actually see that Air Server is got a fairly good chunk of that. And it's using 5.5 megs out of my network, and that's on wireless. So we will disconnect that for the time being in order to actually not have my computer die. Uh, and there we go. Now it's dropping down to a little bit more of a modest number. Now, as far as your settings, like I said, uh, APOC went ahead and he did uh, a very good overview on live streaming and how to get the best output. One of the biggest things that I can recommend for your output for your live stream, uh, whether you're using the Intel, I, don't know, I can't remember what the other one is, start with the very basics. Go down as low as you can possibly go and see what it looks like as far as your bit rate. There are a lot of calculators around there. Uh, the notable features here though, uh, under output in settings, you're gonna wanna set the keyframe interval seconds to four. The profile I'm using is baseline. The rate control is going to be CBR, constant bit rate. And the bit rate for 720p, which is the maximum uh, bit rate you're going to get on YouTube gaming, for that you want between 2,000 and 2,500. Any higher than that, you're probably going to want to increase this to 2,500 to 3,000. Um, what else is there here? I don't have any downscale filtering in order to actually speed it up. Common, and this is under video. The common frames per second or FPS value is 30. That's on average. If I'm recording off of my phone, it's usually 29 point some strange value. Um, your stream output. There's a drop down here that allows you to actually say streaming service or custom streaming server. If you're actually live streaming, it will walk you through setting this up, uh, which is very nice. What else is there? Um, some of the confusions that I have, double natting. Uh, if you're not technical, I don't know, check Wikipedia, go look what natting is, network address translation. Um, so what that means is that I have a router behind a router, which was causing extreme latency as far as doing a live stream or a live broadcast. So my, my router is translating my internal traffic and doing some network translation, and then it's going to another router, which is doing exactly the same thing, but on the path back, obviously it has a lot of problems getting the traffic back to me, which is where the problem was as for my live streaming. Um, again, start with the very, very basics. So say I'm running a toaster and I want a live stream. That's, that's really where you have to start from and then tweak it from there. The NVIDIA settings, the one thing that I did have to play with in order to get this up and running a little bit better, and I do have an open ticket, by the way. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, an open ticket with Air Server. And the reason I have an open ticket is because I don't feel that the CPU usage should be so high when you're doing Miracast. Uh, your NVIDIA control panel you're going to want to actually muck around with what is utilizing the GPU and what is utilizing the CPU. Uh, the difference between the two is that a CPU is very good at handling one task at a time very, very quickly, whereas a GPU is very good at handling millions of transactions all at once. <coughs> I have a cold. If you couldn't tell. Um, what are my settings? I do have OBS, I believe, running on the integrated graphics, which is the NVIDIA. And Air Server is actually using the high performance NVIDIA processor. And the hope there is that it's utilizing the GPU for some of that post processing, but it doesn't seem to utilize it quite well enough. 
Again, it's very CPU intensive, but hopefully that will change with future releases. Um, what else do I have going on? The application that I use here is called Discord. That's for my chat. Um, it is a new startup company. Uh, it is still in beta. I have been in contact with them. They're wonderful individuals. Uh, they seem to be very friendly and helpful. Uh, play around with this. It allows you to actually sign up and get all your friends there. Um, you can see that I've got APOC in my 